Welcome to the Eye of Truth. Some have calculated that there may be as many as 40 billion planets that could sustain life in the Milky Way, our home galaxy. There are also countless galaxies like the Milky Way within the universe. Considering these massive, nearly infinite numbers, it seems impossible that there wouldn't be other intelligent life in the universe. What's more, our civilization may not have been the first intelligent civilization in the universe. Recently, the question has continued to shift more from, do aliens exist, to how can we find aliens? Out of the countless possible alien civilizations, some could have existed for hundreds of millions or even billions of years. It would be difficult for us to imagine their level of science and technology. An astronomer named Nikolai Kardashev had thought the same thing. He posited that there could be alien civilizations that were billions or even tens of billions of years old, and with that in mind began classifying civilizations by level of technological advancement. Kardashev decided that, regardless of the type of alien, what it looks like or what it eats, a civilization would require energy above all else to develop. Energy is, of course, required to maintain life, but developments in science and technology also require enormous amounts of energy. A civilization that produces more energy could be classified as a more advanced type of civilization. Kardashev then quantified the amount of energy consumed by civilization and used this as an indicator in classifying possible alien civilizations. This method of classification is today called the Kardashev scale. Kardashev himself defined only three types of civilizations, from type 1 to type 3, but this has expanded up to type 7 by subsequent researchers. Let's consider how each type of civilization might look. A type 0 civilization uses natural resources found on their local planet to obtain energy. A somewhat advanced type 0 civilization would also be using resources other than trees, such as oil or natural gas. One characteristic of a type 0 civilization is that it either has not developed propulsor technology or generates power for all its propulsors by burning chemical fuel. A type 0 civilization could be described as a baby civilization within the grand scheme of alien civilizations. In the Kardashev scale, the type of civilization is determined based on the amount of energy produced per second. A type 1 civilization produces at least 10 to the 16th power watts of energy per second. According to the calculation method by astronomer Carl Sagan, our global civilization in 2018 would be at a level 0.72 on the Kardashev scale, based on the total amount of energy we consume. The amount of energy would need to be increased 10 times over in order to advance 0.1 points on this scale. We can therefore estimate that it will take roughly 100 to 200 years for our civilization to increase from a level of 0.72 to 1.0. A type 1 civilization is also called a planetary civilization. A planetary civilization does not depend on natural resources such as soot or oil. Instead, their main source of power would be nuclear energy. Although our current civilization at level 0.72 does make use of nuclear power plants to convert nuclear energy into electricity, these plants obtain energy through nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is hardly ideal as it has a low energy conversion ratio, generates radioactive waste, and carries a high risk of nuclear accidents. A type 1 civilization would instead use nuclear fusion it is thanks to nuclear fusion that our sun has continued to burn for billions of years. If we could develop the ability to make use of nuclear fusion, we could obtain clean, safe, and nearly unlimited nuclear energy. Propulsors used within a Type 1 civilization would mostly be powered by nuclear energy. Once we become a Type 1 civilization, we will be able to send manned spacecraft to nearly any planet in the solar system. Our advanced science and technology would eliminate cancer and other incurable diseases caused by viruses and infections, and developments in regenerative medicine would allow us to regenerate any organ. This would drastically increase our average lifespan. We would be capable of living in the sea and in the clouds in addition to on land. It's said that it would take around 3,000 years to go from an early Type 1 civilization to an advanced Type 1 civilization. A Type II civilization is also called a stellar civilization. The main energy source of a Type II civilization would be nearby stars. 
Once a civilization reaches the final stages of Type 1, energy generated through artificial nuclear fusion on a planetary scale is no longer sufficient for advances in science and technology. The most efficient and realistic means of obtaining energy would then be to take it from nearby stars. Freeman Dyson, a theoretical physicist and contemporary of Albert Einstein, originated the concept of an artificial structure called a Dyson sphere. He conjectured that, as civilization developed, it would ultimately become capable of obtaining energy from nearby stars. One means of doing so would be to use a so-called Dyson sphere, a sort of shell built around a star. A Dyson sphere could be used to obtain most of the energy released by the star it covers. However, it would be inefficient and unrealistic to completely cover a star with such a sphere, and other structures have been proposed as being more realistic, such as a Dyson ring installed around a star, or a Dyson swarm consisting of multiple Dyson rings. Once our civilization can reach Type 2, we will no longer suffer from energy-related problems in practical life. This will also eliminate poverty. We would be able to freely travel to and return from any planet in the solar system and would take our first steps toward colonizing space. In the field of life science, our regenerative medicine technology would reach the genetic level and we would be capable of regenerating any part of the body. At our current pace, it's said that our civilization will become a type 2 civilization in 100,000 to 1 million years. A type 3 civilization is also called a galactic civilization. A type 3 civilization would obtain energy using similar methods to that of a type 2 civilization. However, they would gather energy from stars both near and far, all throughout the galaxy. A type 3 civilization would also see the first use of anti-gravity devices. Anti-gravity technology would be used not only for vehicles, but on an astronomical scale including planets. In my previous video, Massive UFO Near the Sun, I showed footage of mysterious objects capable of freely approaching and leaving the surface of the Sun. These could very well be energy collectors equipped with anti-gravity devices sent by a Type 3 civilization. A Type 3 civilization could use wormholes to warp throughout the galaxy, but would not yet be capable of creating wormholes. Type 3 life forms would have already extended their lifespans to the maximum possible for their species, so the field of life science would have reached its end point. The next goal for such a civilization would be to overcome their natural lifespans by extracting consciousness from flesh and achieving immortality. However, this would not be possible for a Type 3 civilization. Although Kardashev believed this to be the peak of civilization and that further development would not be possible, other astronomers have argued that even more advanced civilizations could exist. A Type 4 civilization is also called a universal civilization. Although a Type 3 civilization is capable of using wormholes to move throughout the galaxy, it relies on wormholes that already exist. In order to move freely throughout the galaxy, a civilization would need to be able to create their own wormholes. However, there is not enough energy in the galaxy to maintain artificial wormholes. This is when a civilization will take its first steps towards becoming Type 4. The main energy source of a Type 4 civilization would be supernovas. Supernovas are massive explosions caused during the final stage of a massive star's life. A supernova causes a concentrated and intense release of energy near the star. This would serve as an extremely efficient source of energy as it would generate an amount of energy equivalent to the amount of energy stored and released by the star throughout its lifetime. A supernova occurs roughly once every 40 years in a single galaxy, so a Type IV civilization would travel throughout multiple galaxies to gather this energy. Once a civilization reaches this level, it would finally be able to extract consciousness from flesh and achieve immortality. It would also be possible to create intelligent life and many Type Zero civilizations may have been created by Type IV civilizations. The gods and creators that appear in our myths and religions actually depict Type IV life forms. Still, a Type IV civilization is neither omniscient nor omnipotent. They have advanced to the point where they have finally realized an important truth. The theory of multiple universes is true. There are other universes beyond our own. 
A Type 5 civilization is also called a multiversal civilization. Once a civilization realizes that the theory of multiple universes is true and actually reaches other universes, it will develop into a multiversal civilization. An unmanageable amount of energy would be required to reach other universes. A Type 5 civilization would begin looking to white holes for energy. A white hole is an astronomical body that continues to release mass and energy and is the opposite of a black hole. The existence of white holes was predicted by using time-reversing black hole solutions for Einstein field equations. Although these exist only in theory for us now, a Type 5 civilization would have discovered the existence of white holes and would be capable of obtaining energy from them. It has been calculated that a single white hole would release an amount of energy equivalent to approximately 14 million times that of the entire galaxy. A Type 5 civilization would be gathering energy from white holes in one universe to open the door to other universes. They would certainly believe that they have reached the peak of civilization, but would soon arrive at a new truth. They have mastered the three-dimensional world, but life also exists in higher dimensions. A Type 6 civilization is also called a multidimensional civilization. Once a civilization realizes that life exists in dimensions beyond the third dimension, it will have made the first steps toward becoming a multidimensional civilization. Even if we could somehow enter the fourth dimension, our three-dimensional bodies might be destroyed the instant we enter it. However, this would not be a problem for Type 6 life forms, which have already discarded their bodies and exist as pure consciousness. The problem for them would be obtaining enough energy to enter a higher dimension. They could harness the nearly unlimited energy gathered from white holes in various universes to enter higher dimensions. Entering even a single higher dimension would increase what we could accomplish several hundreds of times over. For example, such a civilization could freely travel backward and forward through time, overcome the cause and effect, and truly become omniscient and omnipotent. They would soon come to a new realization. If Type 0 civilizations were created by civilizations like ours, then who created us and our world? A Type 7 civilization is also called a creator civilization. Unfortunately, a civilization cannot develop beyond a Type 6 multidimensional civilization. A Type 6 civilization would realize that a creator civilization exists but would not be able to develop into a Type 7 civilization no matter how hard they tried. The Creator civilization is not really a civilization, but existence itself. The Creator of all matter, energy, natural laws, space, time, and dimensions exists at this level. They would not be gods, but gods of gods. At our current level of 0.72, we cannot even conceive of what Type 7 existence would be like.